Welcome back. In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about the basic Angulia for step 1 exam. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to answer any question about the basic Angulia. If you were ever asked about the parts of basal ganglia, you'll find the answer in this page. So the basal ganglia is formed by striatum, which is putamen and codate, and it's also formed by lentiform, which is putamen and globus pallidus, and also subthalamic nucleus and substantia nigra. So these are the parts that make the basal ganglia. Now let's go into the deep stuff. So I've came up with four rules that if you memorize like the back of your hand, you will be able to answer any question about the mechanism of basal ganglia. We'll use an example afterwards to see how to use these rules. Rule number one is that if the thalamus is active, it will activate the cortex and this will result in movement. Rule number two is that if the globus pallidus internus is activated, it will cause thalamus inhibition. Vice versa, if globus pallidus internus is inhibited, it will cause thalamus activation and movement. Rule number three, the subthalamic nucleus inhibition will cause globus pallidus internus activation. Memorize the word SEGA, so S for subthalamic nucleus, I for inhibition, G and A for globus pallidus internus activation. And of course, vice versa, subthalamic activation will cause globus pallidus internus inhibition. Rule number four, any step following globus pardus internus or external will be called disinhibition. Also memorize that D1 receptors are for the direct pathway, which is excitatory, and D2 receptors are for the indirect pathway, which is inhibitory. So take a second to memorize these rules or write them down somewhere so we can practice them. So let's say that you want to move your hand, so intentional movement. Just simply memorize that any intentional movement starts with the putamen inhibiting the globus pallidus internus. And from there you can just use the rules that we just made. So globus pallidus internus inhibition will cause thalamic activation, and thalamic activation will cause cortex activation, and this will result in movement. And in case of no movement, just memorize that the putamen will inhibit the globus pallidus externus which will inhibit the subthalamus, and from there you can just use the rules. So inhibited subthalamus means that the globus pallidus internus will be activated, and active globus pallidus internus will inhibit the thalamus, and this will inhibit the cortex, and there will be no movement. Alright guys, that's my way to memorize and be able to answer any question about the basal ganglia. Obviously, this is not an explanatory video. Um, this is just a short video to help you memorize and simply answer all questions about it. Um, hopefully, I made this easier for you and see you guys later.